to another tutorial last upload we talked about some music video effects we talked about zane pillow talking today we're talking about bad bunny jay cortez the kitty music video there's a lot of very subtle effects in here that i think are done very well they catch the viewer's eye but they're not too in your face they're not taking away from the video too much so let's talk about all of the different variations they have in here some of them are very hard to catch but if we go by frame by frame you can tell that there is some distortion going on for a lot of these and as the beat picks up as we go through in the music video you're gonna see the distortion happen a lot more here's some cool scenes they use it kind of just to ripple through they have this bass going on in the background so that's kind of carrying through this effect they also have some ghostly echoes for these outdoor scenes um, some very quick trippy things that happen within split seconds so like I said very subtle and I like how it's done in that way and as we go through to the end as the song ramps up so does all the glitching you can even see some of these 3d glitches that we talked about in my last upload so we'll revisit that and you guys these cool 3d structures in your edits and we'll talk about all the other little subtle stuff and how you guys can recreate it so enough talking let's hop into adobe after effects we're going to use that for the majority of these glitches so while after effects loads up here's a quick word from the sponsor of today's video skillshare today's video is sponsored by skillshare whether you are a beginner a pro a dabbler or a master i've always been preaching the importance of bettering yourself, learning something new, building your skill set, and applying that to whatever it is that you are creating. A lot of people always ask me whether I went to school to learn video editing, 3D design, a lot of the things that I talk about in the tutorials on my YouTube channel. I'm 100% self-taught, so I know the importance of using the internet, using high quality resources, learning materials to be able to pick up these skills, develop them, and then translate them into your work. That's why I love something like Skillshare. It's a nice professional setting. You're able to get that valuable information, which can open new doors of creativity for you and it's completely curated to your liking recently i've been wanting to get into a lot more augmented reality stuff so i've been watching this course by katarina yusova and learning about all the cool things you can do translating your 3d work into a face filter skillshare is also incredibly affordable less than ten dollars a month with an annual subscription if you guys are interested scroll on down to the description the first 1,000 people to use the link will get a free trial of skillshare premium membership all right guys, so starting off here, before we go in and show you the crazy kind of glitching, the distortion that happens throughout, I wanna start off talking about something a little bit more tame, but it creates this cool kind of dreamy light beam effect. So we're gonna do this within Adobe Premiere and then After Effects. As I always say, a lot of the effects are exactly the same within Adobe Premiere and After Effects. The major benefit with After Effects is the ease of use when it comes to masking. So I have some footage here. Let's go ahead and do it first within Adobe Premiere. First, what we want to do is we want to get a rough mask out of the area that we'd like to apply this effect onto. So I'm going to select my footage. I'm going to go over to the left to my effect controls, and I'm just going to grab this little masking tool, Free Draw Bezier under Opacity. So make sure you open that little tab up to see that. Once you've selected this, we can go ahead and start drawing on our screen. Click the little squiggly key under your escape key on your keyboard to full screen this in Premiere. And we're going to go ahead and just get a rough little outline around our subject. And because this is gonna be this blurred out kind of light beams, it doesn't have to be perfectly on edge with him. We just need to have the general area that we'd like to connect. So that's fine. What I'm gonna do is hold down Alt and I'm just going to click and drag down. So we've made a duplication of that clip and we place it in a video layer below it like that. Now on this bottom layer, I'm gonna go ahead and just select the mask under opacity and delete it. So now we have a clip which is if we hide the visibility, just our subject masked out, and we have a clip on the bottom, which is just normal footage. Let's select the clip which has our mask, which is this top one, and we're gonna go ahead and apply some blurring effects onto it. So go to your effects and presets, go ahead and search for a blur, and under blur and sharpen, I'm gonna go ahead and just use this directional blur, and let's just bump up the blur length to actually start seeing something happen. Now we can use this blur direction to kind of designate where we'd like this to go. So let's try and have these going upwards like this. And you'll see this is getting cut off because of our mask. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back up to opacity. We're gonna open up the mask feather and just start cranking that up. You have this sort of light beam effect over top of our subject. Depending on how much movement is in the scene, you may want to go over to your opacity tab again in your effect controls and keyframe your mask path at the beginning. So starting at the beginning of the clip, Click this little keyframe toggle animation button, 
and then you drag, say for example, your subject is moving, you can use these to adjust the light beams or maybe make them stick up more, whatever you wanna do like that. And you'll see because we made the keyframe animation, if you pay attention to the mask, you're gonna see that moving. So very simple, because we have these in two separate layers, like I said, this is isolated. If I hide that visibility, we can select the top layer. And if you're in your color workspace here, on the right side, let's open up this Lumetri color panel. See basic correction. You guys can bump up the exposure. You can add any contrast to these light beams, really hone in on that dreamy type of glow, however you want it to look. You'll see these ones are a lot more raised off of the subject. So you could even go in and just scale this up. So under our motion and our effect controls, you can scale that up. All right, so now let's pop into Adobe After Effects so that we can start getting into those glitch looks. All right, guys, now let's get into the most prevalent effect that you see throughout the music video. This little glitch that you're seeing over top of our subject here where, where it's matching with the beat if you play it with the full audio on. And it's even matching with the movement as he kind of bobs up and down. You're seeing the glitch go up and down with him. So first things first, you want to isolate the area that you want to create the glitch on. When I say isolate, I'm talking about masking. And that's why we're going to use After Effects for this because they make masking a lot easier. We'll control D to duplicate the footage. Let's grab our normal pen tool. And I'm just going to, again, just designate around the area of our subject. It doesn't matter if it bleeds over all that much. Add a bit of feather, so we'll bump that up. Keyframe the mask path. And let's move a bit. And let's select this mask one and just make sure that our mask is kind of following over our subject. We'll do a, a rough little adjustment here. So that's kind of over top where we want it. And again, all you do is hop over, drop your little displacement map on there. And then you create your keyframe. So you can horizontal displacement it. You can vertical displacement it. Let's try a horizontal this time. I created some cool little ghosting stuff before with that. Selecting different channels to get different looks. Start it at zero, move a few frames, play around with your feather on your mask as well. Move a few frames and put that back to zero. You're at the start, goes up to 100, and then zero when you want it to end, easy as that. A quick little ghost distortion, whatever you want to call it, happens very fast, but there as you can see. All right guys, so I also mentioned a little bit earlier that you don't have to do this with just the displacement map effect. There's a lot of different glitch plugins out there that allow you to create different looks, still using the same kind of method where we're duplicating the footage and we're having a kind of glitch off of the subject. So let's hide the displacement map effect for now and we're gonna do the same thing using the Displacer Pro plugin. Now I made an entire video to tutorial all about Displacer Pro. Pretty much what it is, is it's the upgraded version of Displacement Map. A few more options such as Rotation, which we'll talk a little bit about later. You can't do that with just base Displacement Map. You can also displace using Scale. So it gives you a lot more options and it also has a built-in chromatic aberration. You can get this for free, by the way. I'll link my whole tutorial about it down below if you guys are interested. So you can get those kind of crazy RGB distortions going on, cool stuff with the rotation. So you can do the exact same thing I showed you where we're keyframing everything, but try out different things. Maybe try out Displacer, maybe try out Glitchify, which is another plugin which I talked about. I'll leave my whole tutorial talking about that below as well. So let's set that up real quick, just as a quick example. They're pretty much the same as how we did it before. So here's something similar I whipped together in a few seconds, but using that Displacer plugin, this is pretty cool. You kind of have that ghost lean back with the chromatic aberration and then just pop right back into normal. Like I said, using the exact same technique, combining in some of the different tools that we talked about on my channel, and you can get some really cool looking effects like this kind of pop in, pop out RGB ghost. So you can use the tutorials link below to create the stuff I'm showing you, or you can even just browse through my channel and just try and mix in things with these techniques and see how it turns out. Here's one more quick little example just to show you how fast we can do this. Again, we'll just mask out the area, open up your mask, add a bit of feather, drop in whatever type of glitch you want. Splicer one more time. Keyframe all this stuff, move a bit forward. Maybe let's try with scale and let's add in that chromatic aberration just because I think it looks pretty cool. Move a bit forward again, and then you just click the reset button. And here you go. Bam, extremely fast to do and pretty easy and fun to pull off. Here's a closer look at that little phase in and out effect we made just by using Displacer Pro's rotation and like I said, the exact same techniques that we've been showing you guys. All right guys, so swinging back into the video, let's um let's review some of the things that we talked about that we can't really just show in the step-by-step. -step. So I talked about placing this effect on beat, having it kind of follow the motion of something. You get the coolest looking stuff when you do that. You see in my little example in After Effects here, the reason why it 
it kind of looks like he's pulling out of his body is because of the motion he's taking. So being able to identify certain areas in your video like that where you can place this effect is just as important as a skill as knowing how to do the effect itself. Make sure you guys aren't just memorizing how to do the throwing them around willy nilly. You also want to be developing your eyes to see things like this, know where you can apply some cool stuff. That's the real thing that's going to put you above the rest and raise your value as a video director, as a video editor. I also like how they add this flicker effect um, for whenever things start picking up. It looks really well with the subtle little glitch that they toss in here. This is obviously a practical thing. They're doing it on set where they're able to affect the light like that but you can do it in post as well let's go ahead and just pre-compose all these layers so that they're all together the so holding shift click to select them all right click pre-compose them so you can look up exposure under color correction in your effects and presets place that on there you can use this for a little strobe effect a lot of different options within there that give you some very different looks. If you want something a little more simple you can do it with your opacity so go ahead and select the layer click T to bring up opacity and you just create some keyframes. So you click on your stopwatch, little start animation here, maybe move two frames, put that down to zero, move two frames, put it up to 100, back to zero, back to 100. And you're just moving two frames and creating those little animations just like that. So you can create those flickers like that. If you don't want the flickering to be that fast, you space out the keyframes. So if I drag these out a little bit, so check that out, that way it kind of is more like a blinking in and out. So you have a few options for being able to keep that pacing if you want to keep the little glitches subtle. All right guys, so now let's quickly touch on some easy effects. We have a little echo effect here. You can see this also kind of transitions in with this sort of little displacement we've been talking about, a little bit of glow. And if we just play through a little bit here, you'll see how this kind of warps away. So I made a video recently talking about all different types of ghost effects. That is really going to be a useful reference from this, but let's just try and recreate what we saw here. And we're going to also talk about these little warp transitions um, that follow after that. So let's hop back into Adobe After Effects. All right, so we're going to set this up very similar to what we've been doing in the past. Control D to duplicate it. Go to your effects and presets. We're going to search for a little echo. And like I said, in that full tutorial I made, we talked about all of the different types of echo effects you can have just by changing around the settings and going with some different looks with the blending. But let's just bump up our number of echoes, something like three, and then changing our echo operator. Right now it's on add, so it's going to look very bright. Let's put it on maximum. And you'll see how this is starting to look with the lights. So here's on and off. And if you just keep adding in these number of echoes, you're going to see how that keeps multiplying in. So maybe let's bump this up a few more times. You can also play with your echo time. This is how far back these echoes are going to be. And there you go You can get some pretty cool. This kind of looks like brush strokes with the echo. It's always going to be different depending on the footage, but that's how we can get that sort of echo. It looks a lot more smooth, kind of like smoke. So we can smooth that out just by going back into Adobe After Effects, adding in some blur. So let's just look up blur. You guys can also experiment with, again, the order of the effects. However you place this, it's going to look different. So if you put the blur before, you can crank that up a bit more. You can change your blending modes over here in the bottom left. So something like lighten or screen. So very simple, just messing around with a little echo effect and then using some blurring to smooth it all out and get the look that you want. All right, guys, around the two minute mark, this is probably my favorite sequence in the music video. You start off with these light beam effect that we already talked about, and then it goes into this little sequence here. So there's a lot of different match cuts. There's a lot of different in camera transitions like you're about to see right here. And then you have this cool little glow uh, speed ramping transition that you just saw there. So for the beginning part of the sequence, this is more thinking than actual execution or just doing steps. So if you're doing some sort of in camera transition or you're doing some sort of match cut transition, these are things we talked about in the past. I have a shot where the water's splashing up in the face of the camera. You can make a little cut where the camera's under the water comes up like here. That's a seamless little match cut transition. If you want to learn about match cuts, probably my favorite transition. I made a giant guide on it where we broke it down. I gave you five different ways you can do it. Check out my video on that linked below. Here's also another little low budget um, way of doing that where I used a splash overlay in this Riff Raff music video. And then I used that splash overlay to kind of match cut into zooming out of water or zooming into water. It's more just thinking, developing the eye for where it would be good to use than actual execution. If you wanted to do it yourself, you just download some sort of splash overlay. I got that one from Footage Crate. And then put it over your footage where it makes sense, where you can use those match cuts. Here's another one where we zoom down and then you have the match cut of this submerging shot going underwater. Now, let me show you in After Effects how we can create this little glow transition. You can even do it in Adobe Premiere. So maybe we'll just do it in Premiere. Here's that in full speed. Looks pretty cool. Let's pop into Premiere. 
All right, let's go ahead and cut out the footage. Right about here, let's go and add in our little time display. So to do that within Adobe Premiere, you right click on the little gray box and you go to time remapping and you click speed. Now you'll see this pop up. We can make the video layer larger. Let's select that clip and go in the top left to our effect controls. You'll see this little time remapping. You can open that up. In this area right here, we want it to speed up. So we're going to go ahead and in our effect controls, just click this little keyframe button. Again, make sure you're seeing that. So click this button here. And if you make the video layer even larger, you can see this line, this line, this is representing the time remapping. You can actually click and drag up and you'll see how that value is going from 100% put it all the way up. So let's drag a bit. Let's go ahead and make another keyframe here. And then let's drag this keyframe up. So click and drag, make that 200%. So it's going to go from 100% here to 200% there. And then you can kind of ramp it out by just dragging this and you'll see how this is creating this ramp that kind of smooths out the transition from normal to fast makes it a little bit more smooth you need to do is add the glow so you guys can use my glow preset on my website um, it's in my effects pack 2.0 or if you guys want you guys can use any other third-party plugins I know red giant has a glow preset has a glow plugin I know the sapphire pack from Boris FX has a glow plugin so you have many options for that just start it at the beginning so that the threshold is low Frame that we don't need that much brightness Go to the middle, bump up that threshold, go to the end, and lower the threshold. Simple as that. So there, I think that's pretty good. Just a little glow, adding speed in the middle. A lot of you may be wondering how they have this little clone in the box here. And this is more of an in-camera transition as well as just using some simple masking. I made a full tutorial talking about how to do something like this. So because this in of itself takes a much longer explanation than I can fit in here, I'm going to leave the link below if you want to see how you can add multiple versions of yourself into one room. It's pretty simple. You just film the area on a tripod, take two different shots, and then you mask in between. It's very easy. But if you want to see the full step by step, check out that link. And of course, the last thing I want to say is this quick little 3D glitch effect that you see in here during this crazy end part, but it looks pretty cool. And as you can see, you have those 3D kind of splines going up. And I talked about this all in my last tutorial. This is another instance where it would take you a good amount of time to set something like this up. So I won't show the step-by-step -step here, but I do have a full guide with the step-by-step -step on creating something like this for free, as well as I have a little drag and drop template where you just drag your footage in and then there's a little slider control where you can create little glitches like that. If you guys have any other video or any other kind of visual effect you want me to break down in a tutorial, please comment it down below. I discovered this one because of your guys' comments, so you guys are really fueling the progress of the channel. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.